Hey guys, this is Nick from Income Digs with a video tutorial where I'm going to show you the exact tools that we use in our real estate investing business. Carrying on with plenty more on Podio, today we're going to discuss uh, some recent changes that Podio made to their field types and it ties into a really strong best practice for Podio and it all relates to contact management. Alright, so basically what they did is um, they remove the ability to add a field for a random uh, person. So what I mean by that is we have options to add people to our field types, right? So a contact. Now this is the old way. I have it as an available option because this organization and this workspace was created before the change was made. And we can decide what kind of person this was, whether it's a workspace member or um, a workspace member to be shared with, or a workspace contact. Now, a workspace contact used to be just a random person. You can't do that anymore. All right, so if you're just starting out with Podio, or if you are um, creating your own work, work setup now, you won't see this contact type. You'll just see something called member, all right? And the reason for that is they only want you to bring in workspace members as field types here. And if you have an external person, they want you to deal with it another way with what's called the uh, contact app type. All right, so I'm going to demonstrate that today. And actually, it's really annoying right now because we're going through the changes and people have a mixture of both. And especially if you're downloading apps from the marketplace, they won't work if they have the old contact uh, setup. But I will say that uh, for database best practices, it's a better way to do it. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is we're going to talk about how we should always have a central context repository in any Podio setup we use, okay? So this comes into play in real estate investing all the time. So we have apps like renters, maybe these are people that wanna rent from us, they're sellers, people wanna sell their house to us, they're buyers, people that are cash buyers or conventional buyers. We have all these different types of people. Now the, um, the uh, temptation is to create one app and um, you know put a category field for what type of person these these people are and then work them through the pipeline the problem with that is that every one of those types of contacts has a different pipeline maybe they don't even have a pipeline at all like for an attorney for example it's just a person i want to know so the best practice is to start with a centralized contacts app here's how we do it we're starting from scratch here so Go and create an app and make it the contact type. And we'll call this contacts or people or Rolodex or whatever you want to call it. Basically do that. Um, I always make my standard layout table for the most part anyways. Create the app. And it's going to bring up their template for a contact type. Okay. Now, again, I'm getting this option for contact here because my organization was created um, be before the change was made. But... It doesn't matter, I'm not going to use it at all. So it gives us this list of pretty much standard uh, fields for our contacts. And I'm just going to go with that for now because really the methodology here is that the contacts app is for administrative data only, okay? Meaning phone number, email address, name. Don't go crazy with, with too much other stuff. Um, and then we use our other apps to reference that, all right? So I'm going to add a few, actually I'm not going to add a few contacts. I'm going to do another app. So Again, contacts is going to be hold all of the people that we ever talk to. I'm going to change the icon because that one's really bad. All right, so this is our gigantic Rolodex of all the people. All right, now let's say I'm a real estate investor who is flipping houses or maybe I'm a wholesaler and I want my list of sellers somewhere. Okay, click to add app. Now here I'm going to add a standard app type. I'm not going to use contact app. I'm going to call it sellers. I'm going to call a new item seller. I'm going to pick a different person icon, you know, it doesn't really matter, and make it table again. All right, now I have a brand new app, empty slate, okay, and I can do whatever I want. Now, the very first field that I'm going to put in here is a relationship to my contacts app, all right? Save that, call it related contact. And now, I'm going to put in all that information that's pertinent to a seller of real estate, okay? So plenty of things that we can put in here. I don't need this one anymore. All right, 
one thing that I'm certainly going to have is a category, and this is kind of my pipeline. So my status, new, contacted, negotiation, uh, contract, closed, lost. All right. So that one it will be in there. And then maybe I have a category for motivation. All right. Maybe I have another category for why are you selling? And it can be uh, um, pretty much anything of that. And usually you'd make this a maybe a multiple choice one, right? And this is kind of your seller script. This is what you work through when a uh, seller calls. You'd work through this and you'd learn about their property, you'd learn about their motivation. Maybe you have a text for why they're selling um, so that you can write in, you know, if they're talking for two or three minutes about it, you can kind of write in some notes there. You can also convert this into a web form, et cetera, et cetera, okay? So the point is we have all this super important info that we need to keep for a seller that I don't have room for email addresses and phone numbers and all that stuff, <clears throat> all right? Now, if I had my contacts hold sellers and buyers and all those people, you can imagine how annoying it would get. All that stuff I just put in the sellers, I'd need to bring it in here and make a section for my seller's pipeline or a section for my buyer's pipeline. All right, now I don't need to do that. So if I need to create a new seller, I'm not gonna worry about the email address and phone number, not in this app anyways. So I'm gonna click a uh, related contact. I don't have one yet, so I'm gonna go click to create a new item. John Smith, all right. There's his phone number, save and return. So that's his contact info. And now I can get to the real business, all right? And all this other stuff. And all the, the data that pertains to him being a seller of real estate. Save it, and it's there. So now if I ever need to go into John Smith's data and find out where he lives or what the info is about him, I can click this and it goes to my contacts app. This is becoming a best practice. And it's almost becoming necessary as Podio has disallowed you to add non-workspace members as contact information into your apps, okay? So the idea will be that I can have a contacts list that literally gives me every single person I ever talked to, but when I need to work the pipeline for the sellers, for example, maybe I'm gonna be setting up a card view with status that I can click and move them through and whatnot. I would never do that with my contacts because so, I'm gonna have so many other contacts that aren't going to uh, relate to this, right? now. Just to further this demonstration, let's say that I have <clears throat> cash buyers. Same thing, I'm going to leave it as standard. And let's pick a better icon. Same exact thing, your first field is a relationship to your contacts. That's it, call it contact info. And then we can have plenty of other things here. What I would do potentially is add a star rating. You know, you have your list of cash buyers, maybe you have your five star buyers. Uh, you can have your category of uh, rehabs, rentals, whatever. Uh, maybe you can have their low range and their high range. You're gonna have a ton of fields in here to manage your list of buyers. You do not wanna convolute this with email addresses, phone numbers, etc. Nor do you wanna convolute your contacts app with all that other stuff, all right? So you can add a cash buyer. It's gonna bring up your contacts list. It's not John Smith, I don't know him yet. You can fill in then um, something else. And go from there. All right, save and return brings you back and now you can start getting to work on this cash buyer. All righty, so that is becoming a best practice. Contacts should be separate. Now, related to this is properties and deals, okay? So a lot of real estate investors these days are doing a very similar thing where they're creating an app for properties. That standard app that is 
basically the universe, the idea is it's the universe of all potential real estate that they could transact with, okay? So maybe the first, uh, actually probably what would happen is you'd make a location field, one of the first ones, so address of the property. And then you would have something like um, bedrooms, bathrooms, style, etc. And then plenty of other stuff that you'd have in here. You'd definitely have a square footage. You could probably, and if you've seen some of the other videos out there, you can do a grab Zillow data and make a um, Globy flow to go out to Zillow and grab the data and pull it in here. Okay, so this will be um, all the properties that I ever transact with. And then what you could do and what investors do and I recommend they do is make a deals app where again, we are relating to the property. Okay, because a deal is gonna have a ton of other data that I don't wanna keep in the property. The other thing is we could potentially interact with the same property twice. I could buy it, I could sell it more than once. And if we did that, we'd get really confused with duplicates. Every deal would be a transaction, but the property stays the same. All right? Hopefully that makes sense. So um, date created, you'd have a status again where it's like um, new, Etc. Um, and then you're gonna maybe put a ballpark profit, and you're gonna work your deal. Plenty of tons of fields there that you're gonna have. Maybe you're gonna have an ARV. Tons of fields. Now you're not gonna have bedrooms, bathrooms, square footage. That data is not gonna change. It's not going anywhere, and it should live in the property. All right. So I'm gonna add a deal. I don't have any properties yet, so I'm gonna create a new one. Well, let's do. Um, Pull up a property, it's three, two, I don't have any styles yet, but save and return. So my related property is 34 long. And I can do all this cool stuff, you know, after the fact. All right, now you wanna make sure your layouts are right. So I gotta change this, the related property. So save the deal and then go back to your properties app and just change the reference layout. So the first one is the address, and then maybe your beds, your baths, then your style, then your square footage, save that. If I were to click on this, you see that the relationship has changed, and that's what you want. All right, so this methodology is really strong database practice, and that's why you'll see any template that I create will have this in it. Uh, happy to answer any questions. It can be a little bit confusing as you get started, but it's pretty much necessary now that Podio is making the changes because they've realized that their previous model was not really sufficient. All right, so I expect plenty of questions, and there will be plenty of follow-ups to this one. So thanks a lot for watching. Check out all of the uh, free resources available at IncomeDigs.com, and we'll talk to you soon.